shit! Hello and welcome my little dribbles of balsamic. Uh, today's review uh, is for Deus Ex Human Revolution, the latest in a series which sees our hero Adam Jensen strutting his way through a futuristic version of our, our world like some kind of mechanised Clint Eastwood. I finished it playing it the other night, uh, having waited ages for it to come out, but was it worth it? Was I satisfied? Or like every Beyonce song, will I kind of understand it, but never really recommend it to a soul. I should add that this review aims to avoid all spoilers as much as possible, but still give you a decent idea of whether the cake's worth the bite. So let's begin with the basics. Human Revolution is essentially an FPS game, but with some heavy RPG sauce sprinkled li liberally on top. The game sees you take control of Jensen and try to uncover certain underground plots that are slowly turning society into a festering pile of faeces. That's sociologically speaking, of course. Jensen's story takes in the sights and sounds of Detroit, China, Singapore, Montreal and another location that Deus Ex fans might remember. Why? Well, there's intrigue all over the place, basically. Um, dark stirrings, underground dealings, some stuff about a data chip. Well, this isn't New Vegas, is it? No, no. Uh, and that's just in the first damn zone. Anyway, let's talk about some gameplay. As I mentioned, the game is an FPS, but it's not really kind of a run-in, action, 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 action kind of FPS game. There's a little bit more brains to it than that. Uh, but it has a similar type of style to it that Mass Effect 2 fans for example might recognise, in particular its use of cover. Players can use cover to hide behind and pop out from in a third person view, allowing increased uh, visibility and obviously mitigation to damage. Alternately, alternatively, if you're not the kind of Rambo type and don't want to take on enemies head on, you can also use it to bypass enemies altogether perhaps to de deactivate alarm systems, quietly kill lone soldiers, or turn enemy turrets on the suspecting troops who were stupid enough to stand in your way. Ultimately there's a few ways to play the game, either using stealth, aggression or a combination of the two, and this makes for some pretty decent varied gameplay, particularly on some of the higher challenges. Uh, the game doesn't really limit or reward you in any particular way, whichever way you choose to play it, and each brings with it its own set of challenges that are often very rewarding. In each chapter of the story, there's a kind of a, there's a main mission that you obviously follow, uh, which obviously follows the main plot of the story, and a, a number of side quests as well. The latter of which are, are optional, but well worth doing. Despite the number of missions, I kind of personally didn't feel short changed mostly because each mission starts a chain you don't just do one thing it kind of tends to roll on to another one and keeps you busy and interested um, it kind of it often involves uh, it involves a decent amount of play through it as well um, before getting on to the next part so you know it's not too bad not only do all the missions offer you the kind of chance of making choices and defining your character's ultimate direction, but they do yield great rewards, credits, lots of XP and more. The missions see you taking choices that affect your character and sometimes involve you scaling buildings, climbing in windows, entering sewers and solving human revolutions kind of equivalent of puzzles, whether you do it in stealth or just all guns blazing. 
The missions themselves are quite varied and the overall game can be completed in around 20 to 30 hours I would say on average depending on how much you do and how lost you get. Uh, not a massive amount of gameplay maybe but there's a decent level of replay value beyond that which in my view kind of makes up for it. As with uh, previous versions of Deus Ex, each time you level you can upgrade your abilities, your base abilities uh, and these offer a lot of extra gameplay value as well. These take the form of augmentations which you apply to your body itself which can be earned from levelling, purchased from things called limb clinics which is a kind of like a bit of a hospital if you like and occasionally you can find them around the world as well while you're out questing. You can learn to breathe in tunnels full of gas, run silently so people can't find you, uh, you can carry more, you can punch enemies through the wall, you can enhance your vision to see enemies through, through walls as well, as well as other traits that help you with hacking computers and safes, uh, damage mitigation and kind of recovery, things like that. The talent system is, is pretty detailed. You don't really max out every ability, uh, meaning you can customise your abilities to suit your character and how you want to play it from playthrough to playthrough, from difficulty to difficulty. With this in mind, it's worth deciding what kind of Jensen you actually want to play. Do you want to hack computers, for example? You don't have to. The game offers ways around that if, if you want your characters to tackle problems differently. On the whole, I found the talents you know, a great addition to this game, adding a sizeable chunk of fun and diversity to the standard gameplay. For example, there's nothing like throwing a photocopier at an enemy, then punching his friend through a wall and slipping into the shadows with your cloaking ability running. Even more aggressive ta uh, choices offer a lot more fun and diversity, particularly the Typhoon ability where you kind of crouch down and launch a wave of energy shooting shrapnel in 360 degree angles. All animated and very cool for those oh, oh my god crap moments. Along with the talents you can also upgrade your weapons with faster fire rates, uh, greater ammo capacity, silencers, laser sights and so on. Uh, the weaponry itself is fairly standard if I'm honest with a couple of pistol options, a couple of automatic weapons, a rocket launcher, a crossbow, a shotgun, a couple of energy weapons, a heavy rifle and a couple of options for grenades, uh, gas, frag, uh, EMP. Um, but you know they can be quite handy in their own way. It struck me that they kind of kept the weapons fairly straightforward uh, because the majority of the gameplay comes, comes from other aspects of the games, like your talents. Uh, however, if you choose to exclusively use weapons, if you want to do that, uh, to dispatch your enemies, the game doesn't really penalise you either. There's plenty of ammo around and plenty of options for firing positions using the very flexible cover system, so you're, you're pretty much free to do whatever you choose to do, however you choose to play it. And that's quite refreshing that it's done pretty well, you know, nicely balanced across um, the different play styles. All of it works pretty well, like I said, um, and when combined to the difficulty settings, you can, you can choose to play on easy mode, which uh, focuses obviously on the story specifically. You can fight on normal mode, where enemies are a lot more challenging. Um, and obviously on the hard mode, or as they call it, the Deus Ex mode. <laughs> uh, and, you know, that's really for people that really want to flex their awesomeness. Regardless of your choice of difficulty, the AI is pretty damn good It's and responsive, you know. With, uh, you know, enemies that, that, that will use cover, they'll react to your actions, they'll come and find you. If they can't find you then they'll go off alarm state and you can use that to your advantage and stuff like that. They'll throw grenades, they'll try and counter your actions as well as trying to be a little bit sneaky as well. Another aspect of the gameplay that's done with some panache I, I really have to say. Now sound and graphics, um, beyond the gameplay the game is graphically very cool indeed. 
as is the sound. Everywhere you go, there's something to see and hear, all of which you, you know, which have an attention to detail that add a lot of atmosphere to the game. The animations, the cutscenes are, are superb, with lip syncing and, and facial mannerisms being very polished and believable. I have to admit, at no point did I find myself kind of slipping out of being immersed, something that tends to make me gr grumble uncontrollably when it happens in other games. There were more than a few occasions when I thought this is simply awesome, something that not many games can manage in the course of a year, and in only 20 or 30 hours, it really packs a lot in. So let's get to the bottom line now. Basically, Deus Ex is a really fun game, with lots to do and see, with a high level of replay value due to the impressive talents and characterization systems uh, propping up the main story. It isn't a uh, let me grab a gun and shoot everything kind of game. It's much more kind of along the lines of Mass Effect, where you have to use your brain, it's about the story, it's about the choices you make, and things like that. Uh, but it's very rich in that. Um, when I finished playing the game, I wanted more. And despite the game being fairly short, as I mentioned, in comparison to other titles, you do get a diverse and varied experience in that time, an experience you can change in further playthroughs. The story itself was a, a little bit linear for me, but in some places, uh, you know, in some places it was kind of fairly obvious. But for me at least, it didn't really actually matter that much. The gameplay took centre stage really, um, despite being fairly evenly shared between dialogue, running around and fighting. Having said that, I really enjoyed it, and I'm halfway through my second playthrough already, making other choices in both the story, my augments and so on and so on. It's a kind of deeply addictive game, with a high attention to detail which makes it even more enjoyable. Yes, those hours might disappear while you're playing it, but what the game packs into that time makes it a real enjoyable ride. Now, while your choices don't have the same impact as games like Fallout New Vegas, Mass Effect 2 or Dragon Age Origins for example, <coughs> excuse me, good lord, um, they still offer a good level of alternative playthroughs. Personally I would have liked to have seen more options here where you can change the outcome of the story something the original Deus Ex kind of paved the way with back in, what was that now, 2000? However, this this is my kind of observations in retrospect. While actually playing it, none of that was bugging me. I simply enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, so is it worth checking out? The short answer is definitely. The long answer is DEFINITELY! Deus Ex always tends to offer a polished experience, despite the slightly ropey experience of uh, Invisible War, for example, and even the occasional thing you'd, you'd like to improve in retrospect. When you're playing it, it's simply fun, 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 and more fun. It's like being kind of like your star in your very own movie. Um, if that movie was like The Matrix crossed with Frankenstein crossed with Blade Runner or in my case The Muppets of Manhattan. But anyway, it's a, it's a classic kind of uh, cinematic experience uh, that you're in for with a good balance of action, story, puzzles and customization, a balance it holds consistently throughout. Anyway, if you want to know more about Deus Ex Human Revolution, then check out the website, which is linked in the description. And if you want to follow my playthrough videos, then check out my channel's playlist. Until next time, my friends, be uber, be uber. And sorry about the cough. Security alert. Through the primary control Ah, oh, shit.
the way And like a green beret, we will lead the way Into battles who have no fear We will draw near So that we can persevere like